Hey. How is my lovely girl? Feeling lonely? Me too. I'm sorry, honey. I just felt kind of empty, so I decided to call. I just wanted to hear your voice. I hope that's okay. Were you asleep? You were getting ready for bed. Aw, uh, I can hang up if you want. Are you sure? Okay. How was your day? Oh? What happened? Uh, are you okay? You sure? Mm. Alright. Thank you for telling me. I'm here, baby. I'm here. Myself? <laughs> it was alright. We had a rush at the end, and some drunk guy tried to flirt with me at the bar. I told him I was already taken and that he was barking up the wrong tree, and then he started meowing like a cat instead. It was kinda cute, but I had to call a cab for him since he was clearly not fit to drive. And then when I was walking home, a homeless guy asked me if I had any food on me. I told him I didn't have any food, but I did have some water, and I handed him my canteen. He thanked me for it, and then walked away. And I was too nervous to tell him that I only meant to give him a drink, not the whole canteen. <sighs> it's okay, it was only 20 bucks. And he probably needed it more than me. I can get another one. Anyway, when I was making supper, one of the songs you sent me came up on my playlist. And... Well... It reminded me of you. Which made me really happy, but also really sad because it made me realize how much I want to see you. And when I sat down to eat, Poppy jumped into my lap and curled up in a ball. And I don't know why, but it made me tear up. The only person I could cuddle with was my cat. I wanted it to be you. I just really want to see you. I guess we should be thankful that we live in a day and age where we can talk to each other even when we're miles apart. Back in the old days, others were not so fortunate. But that still doesn't change the fact that I want to be there with you. I've never gotten to hug you or cuddle with you. I know you don't like to be kissed, but I'd like to just hold you at least once. If you ever get to come down here, I'll take you to Euromug and buy us a couple nacho bowls, <laughs> and I'll personally serve you a few drinks. And if I ever come to where you are, you need to show me your stash of nerd stuff. I really want to see it in person. That plushie is literally the most huggable looking thing I have ever seen. I want to squoosh it. Yes, I do. I just want to give it the biggest squoosh. And I want to try some of the local food there. The way you describe your meals there makes it all sound so amazing. It's amazing to me, honey. I don't get to be around it all the time. That reminds me. Have you been getting enough to eat? You're being honest, right? Sorry if I'm being annoying. I just want you to be healthy and well-fed. Because I care about you, baby. I guess I'm kind of contradicting myself by keeping you awake, but... I'm feeling lonely, and I want to hear my girlfriend's voice. Hmm. Yeah. Just like that. Mm. Hey. If I was there with you, lying beside you in bed, 
What would you want to do? Really? <sighs> that sounds nice. We should do that then. When we meet up. <laughs> no, I wouldn't mind. That sounds great, actually. Oh! Poppy just hopped up on my bed. Want to say hi? Hi, Poppy! Look who it is! Oh, you're so soft. You get the best of pets. <laughs> Good kitty. <laughs> Poppy was being a bit of a hindrance yesterday. I was doing a sketch and she hopped up on the table and sat on my laptop. Then was like, pet me please. It was at the worst time too. I was using the text tool to add some text on the bottom, but thanks to her, when she finally got off the keyboard, the sketch was apparently drawn by Zig and just lots and lots of G's. Nothing a few hundred control Z's couldn't fix. This is why we save our work as we go. Hmm? What was the sketch of? Hmm. It's a surprise. It's almost done. I just need to add a few more features. I know my digital art isn't the most fleshed out art style, but... Well, this one I want to get just right. I'll give you a hint. It's one of your OCs. <laughs> it's not going to be done for a while, but... We'll see. Hmm? I mean... You're welcome, maybe. <sighs> but you haven't even seen it yet. <sighs> it's the thought that counts? <laughs> then I'll have you know I'm always thinking of you. If I could charge the thoughts of you in my head rent money... I'd have enough money to buy a ticket to come see you. Hush. I like stupidly romantic fluff. You know that. You getting sleepy? <sighs> yeah, me too. Alright. I can hang up then. <laughs> have a good sleep, kitten. Hmm? You want me to ramble you to sleep? All right, I can do that. I can't promise I'll stay awake much longer though, but I'll try. You know, I was just thinking the other day about how lucky I am to have met you. If you really think about the mathematical odds of us meeting, you and me practically live on opposite sides of the world. The odds of us being in the same call and happening to mention things we both liked turning to a relationship it's not zero, but it's definitely low. It just makes me think how much stuff has or hasn't happened to us just because we happen to be doing the right thing at the right time. I mean, if that's all it takes to have something alter your entire life, then how much stuff do we miss out on on a daily basis without even realizing it? I'd rather not think about it, to be honest. As they say, ignorance is bliss. Sometimes there are things you're better off not knowing since they can cause you unnecessary stress or because there's just nothing you can really do about it. Of course, sometimes there are circumstances you'd want to know about beforehand. Like if you're taking part in a dangerous job, though you may not want to know how much danger you're in, you should so you understand the gravity of the situation you're in. But, going back to what I said earlier about the odds of us meeting being low, but not zero. Even then, us meeting, we were still just friends for the longest time. And hey, neither of us really knew that we were the proper sexuality for one another. And even if we were aware of that, one of us had to make the first move. And... 
Like, I'm glad that happened. I'm always worried. Always have been. Making the first move on somebody you have feelings for is definitely not easy. I mean, it's easier for some people than others, I guess, but a lot of the times you don't want to ruin what you already have, or... You don't want to risk making them uncomfortable, but you know what they say. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You gotta really think about the alternative. Are you okay with just staying as friends forever? Or do you want to risk becoming something more? Maybe you'll end up losing and having nothing? Maybe you still won't succeed, but you're still going to be friends. Or maybe you will succeed, and they feel the same way. It all depends. What are you comfortable with doing for the rest of your life, I suppose. But one thing that definitely hurts is to say something you regret. But one thing that hurts just as much is to regret not saying something. Both can hurt. Life isn't easy, is it? <laughs> Trying to decide to be brave can be scary. Although a lot of the times when you do something scary, you are being brave. Because being brave, it doesn't mean that you do something without fear. Heck, if you're doing something dangerous and you aren't scared, that might just simply mean that you're naive to the amount of danger that you're in. That's not a good thing. Of course, there's a difference between just lack of fear and naivete. They don't go hand in hand. But what I was going to say was a lot of the times if you're doing something that scares you, and you're afraid, but you're doing it anyway, that's the definition of bravery. Being able to act while still being afraid. Being brave is not all about not being scared. People who have done brave things often were terrified. Honestly, it's admirable when people don't try to own up to it, or they don't try to put on a facade or whatever. They do something that scares them, and they do a really good job, and they say, Oh yeah, I was terrified. That's humbling, to be honest. They're not trying to seem like they're so much better than everyone else. They embrace and accept the fact that they're vulnerable. And yet, at the same time, they embrace the accomplishment they did. Because they did do something incredible. They deserve recognition for that. Well, at the end of the day, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> Alright. Those two sayings don't go very well together, but my point still stands as things take time. Self-improvement can be difficult. Taking a step with someone can be difficult. Doing something scary can be difficult. As long as you don't give up, that's fine. You can go at your own pace. It doesn't apply to every situation, but more often than not, you can fail a hundred times. You only have to get it right once. And that's what really matters. As long as you succeed, the failures you went through was just the road there. I personally believe that it's the results that are important. The means are, of course, important as well. But at the end of the day, if you accomplish something, you're allowed to be proud of it. You shouldn't be disregarded for the amount of